Zapier is the most powerful plugin for ChatGPT. Basically, Zapier is an app that connects other apps. Over 5,900 different apps, it could connect them together, apps that will not be able to talk to each other at all. And now you could automate all kinds of different things using Zapier inside of ChatGPT. I'm gonna show you a very practical step-by-step -step process of using the Zapier plugin and using AI to automate a sequence of tasks. And if you've never really found a good use case for ChatGPT for your day-to-day, -day, this is really going to change that with the Zapier plugin. Okay, let's jump into ChatGPT here. I wanna show you how to activate the Zapier plugin first. If you go to the settings menu over here and go over to settings and beta, there's going to be an option under beta for plugins. So this needs to be turned on. This though is only available in the plus version of ChatGPT, basically the paid version of ChatGPT. So you will have to upgrade your account if you want to use Zapier. Then all you have to do is come up here, go to GPT-4, and then make sure you go to the plugin tab and then click this drop down. Yours is not gonna have any here. So go all the way down to the plugin store and just search for the Zapier plugin and then just press install. So once it's installed, you could uninstall it, but do that first. The one other thing I want you to do, if you wanna follow along, there's this other one called Video Insights. It's one of my favorite options. I'm gonna show you with my use case how I combine these, but install this one as well. You don't have to do this step, but this will let you follow along with the rest of this video. And then to activate them, you just have to press this drop down here and make sure the check mark next to Zapier and Video Insight is on. So right now you could only have three enabled, three different plugins. There's hundreds and hundreds, but right now I'm just gonna have Zapier and I'm gonna have Video Insights turned on. Now the next thing I recommend is if you press the three dots over here and go to settings, you also probably need to turn on two-factor authentication. So make sure you enable this as well because when you connect this to Zapier, it will require that. That's on the ChatGPT account, but it does require typically the two-factor, so turn that on. So now the very first thing I'm gonna do is inside of ChatGPT with the plugins activated, I'm gonna make sure they're activated. I have Zapier and Video Insight. The very first thing I'm gonna ask is this prompt. I'm gonna say, give me a link for making a Zap because we want to set up the Zap through the OpenAI, through the ChatGPT setup. If you go to the Zapier website, it's actually a whole different layout. So we need to do this and get this link first. So let me click this link right here. Now, if you don't have a Zapier account, it's gonna bring you to this page. So create yourself a Zapier account. They have some free credits available. At some point you're gonna run out and you're gonna to have to upgrade your account. But right now you could start for free. So sign up here so I could show you the next step. Now, then if you click the link in ChatGPT again, it's gonna bring you to this page. So I recommend you go back, click the link, and then come over here to set up one of these actions. You have to set these up before we could get started. So this again is gonna look different. If you've ever used Zapier, that's not what Zapier looks like. This is basically the OpenAI setup for ChatGPT to work with Zapier through that plugin. So make sure you see something that looks like this and you're probably only going to see something that says incomplete action. These are the couple that I'm setting up right now, but all you have to do is press add a new action over here and inside of new action, type in anything that you want to accomplish through this. Here, basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take something I'm gonna create inside of ChatGPT, put it inside of Google Docs, so it's saved in my Google Docs account automatically and then automatically post it on a blog website. So I'm gonna do all those steps using this automation. So I'm just gonna say create a Google Docs account from text. That's my very first step. The second step is gonna take a different zap that will take that document and create a post for me. So in order to do that, it's gonna say Google Doc account. You need to link your Google account here. So connect a new account, it's gonna pop up. It's gonna basically give you this to connect it. I've already connected my account. And then document name, document content. I'm gonna, for both of those, say have AI guess the value. For written content, it's gonna do a good job here. And there's some more options here that I'm just gonna leave by default, but you could read about these. These are all optional. Then all you have to do is enable this action here so it's activated. Let me just delete this one because I just did that a couple of times. So as long as one of these is turned on, mine is create a document from text. The text is gonna be generated by ChatGPT, okay? So this is turned on. 
Let's go back to ChatGPT. Now that this is set up, let me give it my second prompt. And this one, try to kind of copy and paste from the description below. And I'll kind of break it down for you. I said, write a 500 word blog post, SEO friendly blog post, use headings and subheadings, format it for readability and keep it at eighth grade reading level. Don't use promotional language. And I pasted a link to a video that I created. So all I did was I went to my YouTube channel, copied and pasted a video about the top 10 chat GPT plugins. I pasted that here. Now you don't have to paste any type of video. Obviously you could just say, write me a SEO friendly blog post, give it a topic and it's going to do that for you. But I prefer to use my own transcript from my own video. And then the most important part, then create a zap and copy the content into my Google Docs. Once they're in my Google Docs, I could then create lots of different zaps to send them anywhere I want. And now I have access to them outside of ChatGPT2 for proofreading and things like that. So let me go ahead and send this message. Then I'll show you exactly what happens. Again, make sure the video insights is used if you're using some kind of video URL and Zapier is turned on and you already set up the first action I showed you. If you didn't set it up, it's going to basically create zaps that don't really work very well and they're going to give you kind of confusing messages. So if you follow in this order, you should be where I'm at right now. So first thing that happened is Video Insight got used here and it basically wrote me a blog post and it did a nice job with giving him a very SEO friendly title and he broke it down for really easy way to read it because it's going to copy and paste it into my Google Docs that way. Now here it's going to say, let's create a zap and copy the content into Google Docs. Again, we had to do that first step. Otherwise it's going to give you confusing messages here. If you didn't set up that Zapier action, I showed you this one basically on the open AI side. Let me go back. Okay. Now you tried it a few times and he did it finally, but it wasn't able to put the whole text inside of Google Docs. So sometimes that is a little bit of limitation in my use case. So I might have to do smaller chunks, but it created the first blog post inside of Google Docs. So I need to actually say, okay. So if I click the action option, it's going to bring me to this page. It says confirm and run the action. So it still requires a little bit of a manual process here to press okay for it to do that. But once it's set up, I'm going to show you why, why it's a lot more powerful than just this first option, because now that is outside of chat GPT, I could do so much more than what I could do with it inside of chat GPT. If I press run over here, it's going to run that action. I'm going to get this confirmation. So let me go back to my Google docs and I'll refresh this page. And right here, the top chat GPT plugin just appeared over here. I've done it before. The last time I did it, he actually copied and pasted the whole blog. This one, he actually had a little bit of trouble, but it's in beta. So hopefully that's going to get fixed very soon. So every time you review the action, you press okay. Now here's where the power really comes into play. So let me show you this. Now I'm going to ask for another zap and I'm going to say, create a zap to take that Google doc that we just created and turn it into a Tumblr post and publish it. Now this is going to use zap again. So every time you say create a zap, it's going to create one. Now this one's going to look a little bit different because that wasn't my initial setup as an action. So I'll show you how to set this up. This is actually the traditional way that you use Zapier. So I'll show you the next step, but now you could do a thousand different things with the Google docs that we just created from chat GPT input. So here's the step-by-step -step of what's going to happen. Zapier is going to create this trigger. Every time a new Google doc is created, which is what I just did, then it will create a new post on Tumblr, or it could be medium or any blog website that you want to post to using the content from the Google docs. So you could do this, imagine with any type of content website that is text-based, I'm going to click this link. So now this is what typical Zapier looks like. Basically the trigger is what causes an action. I showed you that already. The action was when a Google doc is created. So that is the very first trigger. Then the action is, it's going to create a new post to Tumblr and it's going to publish that post. Okay. You could have just said publish that. I like these couple of different steps here. I got a little bit more control. But now if I click the drop down, you have to make sure everything gets this green check mark. So the app or event, that's where the trigger takes place. That's Google Doc. We already set that up. So every time a new document is created, okay, continue. Then what I need to do is I need to connect my Google Docs account if I haven't already. So I've already connected that. Uh, you probably have already from the last step. But if it doesn't remember the Zapier account, just go ahead and change this and uh, connect your Google account. 
continue. And then it's gonna do a test. I recommend you always do the test to make sure it's working before you go to the next step. Then it's gonna pull up some of the documents that you have in that Google Docs account, in that Google account. So this is the one I just kind of copied and pasted. So I'm gonna continue with the set record, but you have multiple ones. If you add a new one, you could press find new one. Okay, then it's gonna bring me to step two. Again, the app that I want to activate is Tumblr. Again, if you wanna change that, you could change that. For example, if you want to write this to Medium here, you could do that. You could basically do anything that is text-based. Then I'm gonna basically say create a text post, press continue there, and I already connected my Tumblr account. So every time it asks you for a connection to an account, you need to set that up because it has to take action on your account. So you have to give it access, and I'm gonna press continue. And remember, they work with 5,900 different apps. So pretty much any app you could imagine, I could have sent it to Slack or Gmail or lots of different things to do there. Now the action. So the blog here is basically the blog I have on Tumblr. If you don't have one, you need to create one. If you don't have it anywhere, you need to create one so you could write to it. Again, you could just use this for the very first step I showed you to just get this to automate the writing of ChatGPT to be inside of your Google Docs. The title is gonna scan the document and it's gonna know the title. So the title was the top 10 ChatGPT plugin. So I'm gonna assign that as a title so it knows what to write. Then you have the body, so you could search for body here. The body showed up as content right here for me, so I could go ahead and select this. You could always make sure in the first step you assign it what the body and the titles are, so it knows that information and just doesn't show up like this. Sometimes it will just tell you it's body, and everything else is optional, so I could leave everything else as is and press continue. And this is basically what it's gonna look like. So it's gonna basically give it the body over here, and it's gonna post this to Tumblr for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and press continue. And then it's gonna ask me to basically post it. So just pressing post, I could give it the same thing. Again, this is a two-step process. You don't have to do that. You could just ask it to post directly and it will just do that step two. So I'm gonna choose the title and the body here. And you could have many, many steps to this whole Zapier setup. It doesn't have to be just the trigger and the action. It could be five different things, for example, in one action, fully automated. And now I just have to publish. If you press publish, this automation now is set. So every time you go through that process I just showed you, it will actually trigger the blog post to go live. Now, if I go to Tumblr, it did the action for me. So it wrote this blog post. I'm just on their posts, top 10 chat GPT plugins, part one. And it basically wrote it exactly from my Google doc. If I go to my Google doc, this is the ChatGPT document that ChatGPT wrote and is exactly the same document. So ChatGPT created the text, the text went inside of my Google Docs, then I created that other zap to basically turn that Google Docs into a blog post that is getting posted on Tumblr. Then I'm gonna do the same thing to post it on Medium, maybe with different wording, have ChatGPT rewrite it, then I can make tweets from it, then I can make other social media posts from it, maybe a script for my short format videos as well. And if you wanna learn all about the top AI tools, including tools like this for automation, we have an entire learning platform all about AI. We have well over 200 different videos. We have downloadable guides that you could copy and paste, thousands of prompts. Right now we have well over six completed courses and we're adding multiple courses every single month to learn the latest AI tools and completely master it. And we have a private community where you could ask us questions and we share resources that we don't share anywhere else there as well. I'll put a link in the description to learn more about that. I hope you found this video useful. I will see you next time.